This is MC Miller's basic hip pack wire dispenser setup. This comes without a wire chainer or any accessories. And I'd like to show you how to install a spool of trail wire. You want to remove the container cover. And inside is your spool lockdown nut. You can remove it from the aluminum spool support. This is the main wire you're going to use to attach to your test station when you're ready to begin your survey. What I like to do is turn the spool upside down and just let some of the wire fall freely off the spool making sure it doesn't get caught up or snagged on anything. Break it off, leaving yourself a few inches of wire. On top of the spool is your core wire tail. What you want to do is peel back the tape, grab an inch or two of the end, now remember this is coated wire, so before you make any connections to your test station, you want to remove the coating. You can use sandpaper or a knife. And what you're going to do with the end of this core wire tail, on top of the spool lockdown nut is your core wire binding post. If you loosen that and look closely in the center, there's a small hole. You can either push the wire through the hole and then tighten the terminal down, or you could wrap the wire counterclockwise around the center piece a few times and then tighten it down. Either way works. And then tape down the remaining part of the core wire tail. Drop the spool in there over the aluminum spool support. It should fall to the bottom of the hip pack. Take the spool lock down, and tighten it over the top of the spool of trail wire. Make sure it's hand tight. If it's loose or it gets loose while you're surveying, there's a chance your potentials will fluctuate. Now take the end of that core wire tail and gently wrap it around the binding post. I'm going to tighten the terminal. You have to be real gentle with the core wire tail. If it breaks all the way at the beginning, the spool pretty much uh, you know, is unusable at that point. So now take the end of the main wire, run it through the cover, Snap it shut, run the wire out of the top of the hip pack, your three foot lead gets plugged into the bottom of the hip pack and the shrouded plug connects to the positive banana jack on your data logger. Now that you know how to install your spool of trail wire, I want to talk about two different setups that require the use of a different style hip pack. This hip pack has a three pin terminal at the top that allows you to use a wire chainer and all the accessories that you see here. We have the wire chainer or measure. These are tested here at our facility for accuracy before we send them to our customers out in the field. We make two different kinds, a USA and a metric version. Then we have the audible display unit with the black curly cord, the external beeper and the external beeper cable, and a two foot test lead. Now we can go over all the connections and show you how to set up for a manual trigger survey. You want to get the main wire out of the hip pack. And then on the side of the chainer is your threading needle. It screws right out. On top is a small hole. You want to gently push the needle straight down and through it. It will come out of the bottom just like that. And take the end of your wire. Thread it through the needle. Pull the needle and the wire through the chainer. 
Once the wire is through, you can put the threading needle back into place. cover back on. This black cord is your counter disconnect. You want to plug that into the side of the chainer. And then run the wire through the top of the hip pack. One end of the black curly cord connects to the three pin terminal on the side of the audible display unit. And the other end plugs into the top of the hip pack. The external beeper connects to the bottom of the audible display unit where it says external beeper and there's two screws on the side. You want to loosen those up about halfway. Take your external beeper cable, negative and positive, slide under the screws. Tighten them down. Take the other end of the cable and it plugs into the speaker here. Now the external beeper is optional, you don't have to use it. It comes in handy if you're surveying alongside a busy road or it's a windy day. Um, if you don't choose to use it, that's okay because the audible display unit has a internal beeper. So now that you got that hooked up, you want to take your two foot lead. And that also connects to the banana jack on the side of the audible display unit and then into the positive banana jack on your data logger. And this is a setup for a manual trigger CIS. Now we can go over the automatic triggering setup. You will need to add a trigger cable, which automatically triggers a reading every two and a half feet. The trigger cable gets attached to the bottom of the audible display unit, the same way you would the external beeper. Both of these can be used at the same time. So I'm going to show you how to connect both. You're basically going to overlap the terminals. This is what your connection should look like. The other end of the trigger cable gets connected to the five pin terminal on your data logger. To turn the audible display unit on, there's a switch on the side. You want to pull it out towards you and lift into the on position. Nothing will be displayed on the screen until you start to walk and wire gets pulled through the chainer. Each foot will be displayed and every two and a half feet you'll hear a beep. At every hundred foot you'll hear a longer beep. Now when you come to a road crossing or a parking lot that you can't survey across, you should lock the unit by switching it to the off position. This will disable the beeper and trigger cable. The unit will still beep at a lower tone and continue to count your footage, but will no longer record any readings.
To unlock the unit and record readings, just switch it back to the on position. If you need to reset the unit, you can press the red button on the side and it will start over.